Okay. Um, <laughs> Ashley, do you want to, do you know where she was? Yeah, so where, what Paula was, was mentioning, she was talking a little bit more about the Global Learning Hub at UC Davis, which, you know, is expanded beyond study abroad, but it's also going to include um, other types of global experiential learning, like research or internships, as well as um, uh, community engagement and global skills and leadership building. So the Global Learning Hub really is, is aimed at making sure that every UC Davis student has some, some form of global learning opportunity before they graduate at the undergraduate, graduate, and professional school uh, level as well. So that's something that we're really um, proud of is all of the different programming types that we do have. I believe the other um, piece that Paula was hoping to mention was also our upcoming workshops that we do have in this same series. And so that's going to include um, a couple of additional parts to this LinkedIn specific session. But we also have had sessions in the past and in the future focused on uh, resume specifically, focused on uh, graduate school abroad, focusing on teaching English abroad, a number of other global learning opportunities sort of for your future. Um, so I'm going to really quickly uh, share my screen to uh, let you guys see some of those upcoming workshops here. So if you you guys can see the Global Learning Hub page, right? For development, okay, great. Um, and so this has been an ongoing series that we've started since the beginning um, of the summer. But as you'll see, the session that you're in today is building your plan through LinkedIn and we'll turn it over to Ellison really soon. But we also have one coming up specifically about the Peace Corps, exploring your global future. Um, as well as um, some previous sessions that we've had. So we had a career visioning workshop that we have a recording uh, set up. We had some undergraduate research opportunities through the DAAD in Germany. Um, so there are some recordings here. And if you do have questions or you wanna get connected with the folks that were giving these presentations, um, feel free to reach out to Paula or myself at the bottom of this, if you go through all of the previous sessions, we do have um, Paula's contact information listed below. But I think for um, time's sake, I'm gonna pass it over to Ellison. So if you wanna take it away with your presentation and we'll just have Paula jump on in with anything else that's left over at the end. Okay, perfect. And it looks like uh, Paula just jumped back in. Okay, great. Okay, so. Sorry, everybody. No problem. Um, I'm turning it over to Ellis and Paula, but I talked a little about the hub and then I mentioned some of the upcoming uh, workshop series that we have, but if there's anything I missed, uh, we'll, we'll catch it at the end, but I think Perfect. we're gonna- Thank you. All right, Ashley, is, uh, is my screen showing okay? Yep. All right, perfect. So again, welcome everyone. Uh, today's session is gonna focus on how you can leverage LinkedIn and the LinkedIn ecosystem to build your professional brand. Uh, with an emphasis on, on leveraging your global experience. So my name is Ellison Weeks. And as far as an agenda for today's session, um, I'll share a little bit about my career history, particularly my uh, recent career. I'll talk to you about LinkedIn and kind of what makes LinkedIn such an impactful professional platform. We'll talk about how you can get noticed on LinkedIn, especially through having uh, a fully realized profile. We'll have a demo of the LinkedIn platform. And then we'll also have time for question and answer. So that's our, our brief agenda. So a little bit about me. Um, I have been passionate about education and learning and youth development uh, since I was an undergrad. And that has really guided the bulk of my career. So I've worked in international education, um, work on building programs for international students coming to the US as well as building out experiences and opportunities for American students to study overseas. Um, I was a language teacher in Japan um, on the Japan Exchange teaching program. That's the picture here down on the right, where I taught uh, English and uh, American culture to students from kindergarten through ninth grade. Um, here on the left, I'm in uh, Osaka at a Japanese university recruiting students to come to Stanford University to uh, learn about American medicine. And um, so that's, that's a little bit about the early part of my career, which was primarily in education, as I mentioned, and also in the nonprofit sector. So recently, in the past few years, 
I uh, was able to make the transition from the nonprofit sector to the tech industry. And, uh, you know, joining tech in the tech industry was never really on my radar. I never thought of it as a possibility or a possible career path for me. But about three years ago, I had an unexpected opportunity through one of my grad school uh, classmates. So I was in Taiwan, I was in Taipei, and I was uh, recruiting students for the program that I managed at the time. And on LinkedIn, my friend Laura, she posted that her startup was looking for someone to join their team as a customer success manager. Now, I didn't know what customer success was, but when I looked at the job description, I saw that a lot of the roles and duties that they were looking for were things that I had done in my other roles. It, it just wasn't in tech. So there were a lot of transferable uh, skills. So I reached out to Laura, as you can see here uh, via text, and that started the conversation to potentially um, apply for this role. So in the uh, subsequent weeks, I met with Laura, I met with other members of this startup company and interviewed with them to learn more about the role and talk about how I could be a good fit for the company. One thing that helped me to stand out from other candidates who applied for the job was my international and global experience. So I highlighted the fact that I had worked um, with people from different cultures. I had worked in different countries. Um, I spoke different languages. And this company had customers not only in the US, but also globally. And so that helped me to stand out against uh, the competition. And then also the uh, leadership of the company here, they also had experience traveling overseas and then working abroad. And so I was able to use that to my advantage and use similarities there with my global experience to build connection with them. Okay, so in 2017, I started a new chapter in the tech sector and I left a uh, nonprofit. About a year, and a, about a year, year and a half uh, into my role at that startup, Cerego, um, I saw on LinkedIn another job posting for a customer success manager role with LinkedIn Learning. So I applied for the role, I interviewed with a recruiter, and then I also met with a hiring manager for that team and I did not get the job. So the first time I applied for LinkedIn, I was uh, denied and um, it was a failure essentially. So that could have been the end of my story uh, with LinkedIn, but at LinkedIn, we, we have a saying that uh, feedback is a gift. So rather than um, seeing this as a failure and giving up, what I did is I reached out to the recruiter and I asked for feedback about my application, uh, about my experience, about my performance during the interview so that I could use it as a learning opportunity to develop myself and improve my skills so that if a job um, with this team or with LinkedIn came up in the future, I could be a more successful candidate. And so eight months after that initial failure and rejection, um, I saw another role on LinkedIn for the same team. I applied for the role, went through the interview process. I had applied the, uh, what I learned from my first experience interviewing with LinkedIn, and then I was successful in getting the role. So I think the, the takeaway for me, and I hope that you um, remember this uh, after today's session, but failure is often or can be a learning opportunity and a chance for you to grow and ultimately uh, achieve success. So if you do encounter a failure in your career or in your educational journey, uh, don't let that stop you. Use it as an opportunity to learn and continue to grow. And that was something that, um, a, a lesson that I learned from this experience. Okay, so now let's, that's a little bit about me. Let's talk about LinkedIn. So at LinkedIn, our mission is we wanna connect all of the world's professionals. So professionals all over the globe um, with each other so that they can be more productive and successful in their lives and in their careers. Why is LinkedIn such a powerful platform, both for students and for professionals? Well, for starters, we have almost 700 million people around the world who are on LinkedIn, right? From 
Asia to Europe to North America to Latin America, and pretty much uh, every continent uh, in most countries are represented on the platform. Uh, about three people join LinkedIn uh, every second, which is a pretty phenomenal growth rate. We have over 50 million companies that have a presence on LinkedIn. So they have company pages, for example, where they advertise opportunities to join the company, right? Uh, we have over 90,000 educational institutions represented on LinkedIn, both in the US and then also around the world. So, you know, if you're looking for educational opportunities, maybe grad school, internships, um, certificate programs, globally, it's likely that one of those institutions has a, um, a presence on LinkedIn. So the bulk of what we're going to talk about now is best practices for how you can maximize your LinkedIn account and your profile and really build your professional brand. There's four steps or four key areas uh, when it comes to building out your professional brand. One is having a, a really polished profile, that's important. Another aspect is to connect with other members of the LinkedIn platform. You also wanna be establishing yourself as a thought leader, we'll talk about that. And then you can leverage LinkedIn uh, to find professional opportunities, so to get jobs or to get hired. So let's look at rocking your profile to begin with. So there's six, six key steps for having a great LinkedIn profile. The first step is one that's super important, and that is to add a photo to your profile. So our data shows that profiles that have a photo are up to 21 times more likely to get a view versus profiles that don't have any photo. And as far as, you know, students often ask me, well, what, what's an appropriate photo for LinkedIn? So typically, you know, you don't have to be wearing a blazer, but some um, photo where you're staring uh, directly at the camera uh, so, you know, people can see your face. It should be relatively professional looking. You want to avoid a selfie or you want to avoid pictures that have other people. So if you're at a party, right, and you're taking pictures with your friends, those definitely are great for Instagram or Facebook, but not quite appropriate for LinkedIn. Um, as you can see here, just some additional guidance you want to have from your shoulders up if you can, neutral background, etc. So super important that you have a photo. Also, you wanna highlight your education. This is really important too. So as you can see in the example, you wanna highlight the institution or the school that you attend, uh, whatever it is that you're working towards. If it's a, a bachelor's degree, a certificate program, master's degree, PhD, what have you, you wanna call that out on your profile. And then also, you know, when did you attend? Um, you can highlight that in your profile as well. Now, something that I wanted to mention is that you want to make sure you're capturing all the different schools that you've attended, whether or not they're <clears throat> in the US or North America or abroad. So if, if you're attending, let's say UC Davis for your master's program, but you completed your undergraduate in your home country, definitely include both of them on your LinkedIn profile. And as I said, there are thousands of institutions around the world represented on LinkedIn. And so it's likely that you'll be able to pull in that information uh, to flesh out your education section. In this part of your profile, you can also highlight different academic awards. Like if you're a Fulbright scholar, for example, or if you got a scholarship uh, to study abroad, or if you are like a Gilman scholar, for example, those are different um, awards, and scholarships, honors that you can call out on your profile. If you're involved in different activities while you're in school, definitely populate your profile with those as well. And then in this section of your profile, you can also list uh, relevant courses that you've taken. So relevant courses tend to be courses that count towards your major or your field of study, or possibly um, are related to different jobs that you wanna pursue. So let's say that you want to um, become a computer science or like a software developer, then it's a good idea to highlight different uh, computer science related courses that you've taken. Keep in mind that you can also highlight online learning that you've completed. So if you've taken courses through Udacity, as you can see here, Coursera, edX, LinkedIn Learning, all of those can be highlighted on your profile. 
It doesn't have to just be an institution like MIT or UC Davis, for example. You also want to add your work experience to your profile. And again, <clears throat> our internal data, we see that if we compare two profiles that are similar and one has work experience listed and the other one doesn't, the one that does is uh, 10 times more likely to get views. And when we talk about views, think about the kinds of people who are looking at your profile, potentially recruiters, hiring managers, right? So it's important that you do everything you can to maximize the number of views that you can get on your profile. Now, students will also often ask, well, what counts as work experience? You know, I'm a student, I've only done work study, or I've only done an internship. I don't have real professional experience. But the reality is that any of the jobs or work that you've done, whether it's paid or unpaid, if it's part-time or full-time, all of that should be captured on your LinkedIn profile. Because when you're doing those jobs, again, even if they're not paid, you're still developing skills, you're developing valuable experience, and you bring all of that with you to um, every step of your career, right? So as you can see here, if you've done a, a global internship or you've done research abroad, um, or you're doing research now, then you wanna capture that on your, um, on your profile. Looks like, uh, Ashley, maybe there's a question. Um, yeah, so um, I wanted to ask you, suppose like jobs, like um, if you're just doing part-time, like a sales associate at Target or something like that, do you add those here? You can, definitely. So, it, it, you know, and, and it depends on how you communicate what, so what you're doing in that job. If mm -hmm. the more you can talk about your impact in that role, the better, so, for example, if you talk about maybe you help to implement a new process or implement efficiencies or um, you helped X number of customers, for example, yeah. then you can highlight that kind of thing on your uh, profile. Uh, okay, so it's not just um, like course related skills, but also like general life skills that we can include, right? Correct. And, and the thing is, LinkedIn is, is a canvas and you're painting a story for a recruiter or other professionals or potential employer. And so anything that you think speaks to what you bring to the table, what your value is as a professional, as a person, then it's fair to highlight that on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so then I uh, just want to, to emphasize that it's really important that you, so you list the role, right? So for example, um, Director of External Affairs, so you list the role, but then you also talk about what did you do and what was your impact as much as you can. Talk about what you accomplished or uh, what value the company or the organization got from you being a part of it, even if it's for a limited time. Similarly, you can add uh, volunteer experiences that you have that can be domestic or something that's more international. Um, the important thing to, to remember is that you want to talk about impact. Um, you want to talk about achievements, accomplishments within that volunteer experience. And then um, you can list as many of these as you have. And as far as accomplishments, this is an example of how you can highlight just different honors and accomplishments that you've had over your um, academic and professional career. Okay, so you can see this user has called out specific um, courses, different honors, publications if you have them, organizations you belong to, etc. Okay, so there's a section in your LinkedIn profile to add skills that you have uh, so that people can see, oh, you know, this person has great communication skills or they know this coding language or they speak foreign languages, etc. So you can highlight those on your profile, as you can see here. And that once you do that, other people in uh, your network can validate or endorse <clears throat> you for having those skills. And typically it's a colleague, someone you've worked with, or a classmate, maybe someone you worked with on a group project, uh, et cetera. And again, the data, just to, to reiterate here, the more um, you can populate your LinkedIn profile, the more likely you are to get views. Um, and it's because of the way the algorithm uh, works to surface your profile in search results. Okay. 
The next step is the summary. So when you have your profile at the very top, you'll see a section like uh, what you see here, where it says welcome. And this is a space for you to create a, a, what we call an elevator pitch, which is a short summary of who you are, um, what have you done, you know, where are you at in your career potentially, what are you looking for, and what can you bring to the table? So you can see that this person, Jamie, right? They've highlighted you know, where, where are they in their career at the moment? What are they focused on? What are they passionate about? Uh, what do they specialize in? And then um, what are they looking for, right? They're, they're, loving, they're just, at this point, Jamie just wants to connect with other people. But if you were looking for internship opportunities or um, if you were about to graduate and were looking for your first career move or professional role, um, this might be a place where you wanna uh, call that out to potential recruiters or employers. So it's your story, right? So you should be talking in the first person. You should keep it short and succinct uh, because people you know, are busy and they may uh, only glance at this, right? So you wanna tell your story as quickly as possible, get their interest, and then that will lead to further conversations. So other ways that you can build your brand on LinkedIn. So next is, is how to build a network. Um, we have a lot of tools in the platform that you can use to help you build out the uh, network of people that you're connected to. So we have an alumni tool, right? So those 90,000 institutions, uh, schools that I mentioned, many of them have an alumni page that you can join and connect with other people from your school. We have LinkedIn groups that are clustered around specific topics. So let's say um, you're really interested in diversity and inclusion and um, you want to meet other people who are interested in that topic or in that profession, then we have groups on that topic on LinkedIn that you can join and connect and network with other people. Highly recommend you follow companies that you may want to join. It can be a company based in the US or uh, like a global corporation or a nonprofit. Um, that's the best practice. You can also follow hashtags, right? Of let's say you want to join the Peace Corps or you want to work at the World Bank. Right, you can hashtag that and then you can start to follow. And anytime someone mentions uh, World Bank or another topic that you've hashtagged, then it'll pop up in your newsfeed. And we'll take a, uh, take a look at the newsfeed in a second. This last Wait, one. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean, I thought you're down that slide. Quick question yeah, that sure. someone received. Um, on the right hand side, it shows um, folks' connection, second, third. There's a question about what does that mean? Uh, like next sure. to Erica, yeah. Yep. So um, a when it says first, that's someone that you're directly connected to. So for example, Paula and I have worked together. We know each other. And so we're a first degree connection. But Erica, maybe it's someone who is connected to Paula, but I'm not connected to her. So for me, she's one level removed. So she's a second degree connection and then uh, so on. Everyone else is a third degree connection. It's kind of like with Facebook, it's your friends and then your friend of your friend. Okay, all right, so I'll jump to the next one. Um, the next way that you can build your professional brand and, and network is to establish yourself as a thought leader. And essentially, this is someone who you can either be considered an authority uh, on a particular topic, or um, you are sharing your thoughts with folks in your network to spark conversation, to spark thinking. And you can do that by um, you know, creating original posts. You can ask questions through network. You can share articles. You can talk about issues. Like right now, a lot of people are um, engaging in, in discussion about um, racism, diversity, um, equality, those kinds of things, right? So you can do that on LinkedIn as well. And this will establish your uh, thought leadership amongst your network. Before you create a post in LinkedIn, we often recommend that you think first, you know, why are you sharing this right now? Is, is what you're sharing relevant? Is it timely? Uh, <clears throat> what kind of impact will your inside of your thoughts have potentially on others in your network. Um, and if you have an opinion, 
it's important that you back it up with some type of evidence or data uh, if you have it. So just three things to keep in mind as you're posting on, on the platform. Okay, <clears throat> with LinkedIn, you can also explore uh, jobs. And so we'll, we'll do a demo of the job search functionality where you can do things like create job alerts um, for jobs that interest you. And then as jo related jobs get po posted, the algorithm will recommend uh, those to you so you can check them out. For this audience, uh, an important feature that I wanted to call out is the ability to uh, create a version of your profile in another language. So let's say that you are, your main profile is in English, but you really want it to apply for jobs in Spain. <clears throat> and so you can create a version of your profile in Spanish to uh, target the local market. Also want to call out that we have a very um, robust LinkedIn mobile app. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, I fully uh, recommend that you download our mobile app. It's totally free. And you can engage with all the content and with your contacts uh, conveniently while you're on the go with your mobile app. All right, so we have arrived at the LinkedIn uh, demo. I'm going to pause here and switch screens. Paula, any uh, questions that have come in? <clears throat> nope, not yet, but I'll just remind everybody, if you have questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat or message me directly. Um, we'll also have an opportunity at the end to ask questions as well. Perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'm sharing my, you should see my LinkedIn uh, feed. Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, you, you know, think you could zoom in a little bit, Allison. So we can. Uh, yeah, let's. If not, no worries. But I feel like that might. I think I can. Yeah. But is that a little even better? Maybe, even maybe one more might be great. It uh -huh. hasn't quite filled the screen, but I think that'll make it a little easier to see where they're navigating in your mouse. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So <clears throat> what you're seeing here is my LinkedIn feed. So I'm going to go through this. We'll go through my profile and then we'll talk about um, how you can network and then also search for jobs. So in your feed, this is where you do a lot of your engagement with other folks in the platform, right? I can see Margaret is in my network and she's posting about a job opportunity at this school, right? And then I can check this out. Maybe she knows someone there. I can ask her um, if she has any details about it, but people post all kinds of things and you'll see it come up in your feed, very similar to, to Facebook <clears throat> or other social media that you may be familiar with. Now, <clears throat> you can create your own posts, or you can also comment on other people's posts. And this is a great way to uh, share, share your thoughts, to engage in dialogue. And then it also can be an opportunity for you to build relationships with other people. Um, I have colleagues who, you know, after engaging in conversation, like in the comments with people about a particular topic, they've been approached with uh, job opportunities or opportunities to collaborate on projects, for example. So I would highly recommend, even if it's just a quick note, just to get your name and your face um, out there. So people start to recognize you as someone who shares insightful uh, comments, for example, or um, helpful information, right? And so in your feed, that's where a lot of this is gonna take place, the interaction with other people um, in the platform. Now, you also have, you know, we have LinkedIn news. Um, if you have LinkedIn learning, we'll show you courses and then there's like uh, promotional ads and stuff. Let's go to the profile and you'll see what, um, what it looks like. Okay, so this is my profile. So we'll take a look. Um, you have the ability to make yourself um, known to recruiters that you're looking for jobs. So for me, I'm not looking for a job right now, so I have it turned off, but I could do that if I want. You can see at the beginning of my uh, profile, I have a little summary or about section about who I am, what my trajectory has been. And I just threw in, um, I need to update this, but I threw in a little word, uh, Japanese word that, I, that speaks to me, Kaizen. And um, also you can feature 
different posts. So as you make posts in LinkedIn, you can feature them so that when people visit your profile, it stands out a little and then they can click in and then look at uh, something that you have posted about and potentially um, engage with that content. Okay, I'll go back to my profile. Um, you can see I have other sections like activity that I've done, my work experience highlighted here. Now, one thing I wanna call out is that you can add media to your profile. So I'm a customer success manager at LinkedIn. I work on the LinkedIn learning product. And so I've added a link to um, this YouTube video on LinkedIn learning. Learn more, achieve more. Oops. That's the message LinkedIn learning has. Okay. So if someone's visiting my profile and they don't know what LinkedIn learning is, they can just click that and then very quickly get a sense of what product I work on. And so I've done the same with different um, positions that I've had. This, these are, uh, this is the website or the blog from the startup that I worked at when I first got into tech. Uh, they have different thought pieces. Here are just different like, videos from roles that I've had in the past. So it doesn't have to be video. It can be uh, pictures. It can be links to different things you've published. Uh, it can be a link to a PowerPoint that you've done. So anything that you can do to make your profile more captivating and more interesting, uh, I recommend it. And LinkedIn has a lot of great tools that allow you to add rich media to your platform. It's not just text. And when you're thinking about LinkedIn, really think of it as a living, uh, dynamic, professional campus. So you can constantly be adding new media and uh, information to it as you advance in your career. So I have a few other things about just different courses I've completed, certificates, et cetera, um, volunteer experience, et cetera endorsements, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm trying to give someone who looks at my profile uh, a picture of who I am as a person and as a professional. And it's pretty easy to add profile sections. So you would just click here and um, under the intro section, you can add, you know, you can call out if you're looking for jobs and things, you can have your about section, and what we'll do is the platform will kind of check off different items as you as you fill them out. So I've got some featured stuff in here. Again, I could add articles, links, media. I've got my background section, different parts of that. So it's really easy for you to jump around and build out your profile in this way. Okay. As I mentioned, for a lot of you who are potentially looking at, you know, uh, pursuing roles in different languages, you can create different versions of your profile. Right, and so I've created this for today's demo. Um, I just, you know, it's a copy of my profile, but I am writing it in Spanish. And then um, you can see here in the URL, I can share this with, let's say I was looking for a job in Mexico City, for example, I could share this with uh, an employer in Mexico City. They can come to my profile Spanish version, right? And then um, they can learn more about me in Spanish. So just a, a tip there that I wanted to call out um, that if you are looking for work in different countries, having a um, different language versions of your profile is a best practice and is a great way to help you stand out in the local context. Okay, so let's also look at, I mentioned how you can connect with uh, different alumni groups. So this is the, let's actually, this is the one of the alumni groups for UC Davis. Um, there's about a thousand folks in here. I can see which of my connections are a part of this alumni group, right? Um, we can see different related groups. So I'm actually gonna go, let's look at, this is another UC Davis alumni group, but I could join this. There are a lot more members in here, but what's cool is that you can see, oops, you can see all the different folks who are in the group, and then you can start to interact with them. Like you could send them messages, you could request to join. Um, but I want to pull up like the actual UC Davis page. Okay, and you could do this really for any institution, but you can go to the page, you can see um, who are all the different alumni who are in um, this school. So I can see there are over 15 thousand people who are employed who went to UC Davis, which is pretty amazing. And then I could potentially connect with them. So let's say that 
you know, she's in customer success like I am. So I could reach out to her and, um, you know, send her a message, potentially asking Kaylee uh, to connect, maybe interested in learning about um, her background or learning about if there are uh, job opportunities, for, exa for example. Um, so that's one best practice there. You can, you know, search for individuals, right? So let's say I was looking for Greg's profile, right? You can look for people and then um, it'll take you to their profile or to show you a list of, of results. Um, you can also join different groups on LinkedIn. So let's say I was interested in, actually, let me ask the group here. Uh, what's a professional field that people are interested in on the call? What's a, what's a field or industry that you're interested in joining in your future? Feel free to just add it into the chat box. International yep. exchange is one okay. of them. Okay, so just by typing international exchange, I can see there's all kinds of, so there's people who work in international exchange. There are jobs related to international exchange. There's people posting about international exchange, right? There's different groups related to international exchange. So I'll click here and I could join this group. There's 1400 people in this group. And this is a great way to learn what other professionals who are either a part of or interested in the same thing, what are they doing? What are they talking about? Can you start to interact with them and potentially learn about uh, professional opportunities? Or maybe you join this group and you start talking to people and you ask them if you can do an informational interview to learn more about the field, okay? So that's just a quick look at, you know, how you can join groups. But this search bar is really powerful uh, functionality. Let's, let's say you were looking for uh, zoology and um, you wanted to look for jobs in zoology. So you can click that. So I'm gonna segue into the, the job experience, uh, job search experience. So I can see here that in the US, there are about 260 results that showed up for zoology. And there's all different ways that I could filter these results. I could uh, filter by different companies, right? I could filter by job type. Am I looking for volunteer work, part-time work, full-time, right? And then that'll filter my results, right? This is a um, job in Thousand Oaks, California. But let's say I wanted to expand my search because remember LinkedIn is a global platform and a lot of folks on the call are interested in having global careers. So I'm gonna look for, uh, let's say I wanna look for public health. Um, but I wanna look for public health, not in the States, I'm gonna look for public health in Brazil and particularly in Rio. So now just with a few clicks, um, I can see public health related jobs that are in um, this particular part of Brazil. I'm gonna take this off. Hey, Ellison, is the remote tab up there? Is that, does that mean that the job is done remotely? That's correct. And so this is a new feature that we've added where because obviously because of the pandemic, a lot of jobs are remote. And so you can filter for remote jobs. Now with this particular set of criteria, um, I'm gonna go back. To, so, so in Rio, there aren't remote positions, right? So you can you know, adjust your search criteria, but um, you can see there are remote and they're starting to list it now in the job ad. Um, so what I encourage you to do is as you're doing your job search, or you're just curious and looking for different roles around the world, um, feel free to play around with this um, geographic part of your search so that you can get targeted uh, results. By default for me, because I'm based in the Bay, it's going to show me uh, San Francisco related roles. Okay, so what we'll do now is I'm gonna go here to jobs. I wanna point out another cool feature that you should be aware of. Uh, two features actually. One is job alerts. So you can set job alerts as you're looking for roles. So let's say 
again, uh, I'm just going to save this one as um, so you can save the specific role. Um, I can also turn on a job alert, right? So let's say I want to get alerts, alerts weekly, and I just want notifications. I don't want emails. So then I save that. And then now I have a search um, alert created for this particular set of criteria. Okay. So if we go back here and then job alerts, okay, then it this alert uh, shows up. And you can delete them as you need to. Another cool feature is interview prep. And this is something that we rolled out recently where we will help you prepare for a job interview. So job interviews for a lot of people are very scary and uh, they make people nervous and you kind of, you know, um, can overthink it. And so we want to provide you with ways to practice more for your job interviews. So let's say I was looking at becoming um, a project manager. Okay. And what we've done here is we have standard questions that are commonly asked during the job interview process, right, for uh, this role. So let's say this is one I want to look at. This is a commonly asked uh, question in an interview. We provide you with a framework, right, give you a little overview. And then um, we, sh we show you some sample answers. Okay, we give you some tips. And then you can also practice and get feedback from people in your network. So you could record a video, right? So there I am. I could record a video and then um, the AI will process the video and give me feedback, which is pretty cool. Or I could write a written response to, you know, uh, I'm just gonna type whatever. This could be a written response. You save it and then um, I can send this to people in my network to get feedback about that answer to, to that particular question. So that's a very powerful tool that you can leverage, especially if you're new in your career, uh, to help you better prepare for uh, job interviews. Allison, is that interview um, prep page, is that a free feature for LinkedIn? Yes. And so, there's another question as well. Um, can you tell us once again, how did you get to the prepare for interview page? So here I am at the home. I'll just start from the beginning. So I log into LinkedIn. I land on this page and then I go to jobs and then I go down to interview prep. And then um, there are a few different subcategories that you can look at. Um, and we fleshed it out so that you can see specific roles. So possibly a role that you're interested in will be here. Um, so the, the, this feature is free. The only thing that's uh, part of the premium package is um, sample answers. But you can view the framework for how to approach the question for free. That's included. So for example, here's an example. When interviewers ask you what you're looking for in a company, don't be fooled. Contrary to how this question may sound, they're not looking for some five minute summary about what you want as a sales professional. They're definitely not looking for you to Okay, so you can see we're, we're going to give you advice and a framework, and these are all people who are subject matter experts in, in their respective fields. Okay, so I want to pause here, and then um, Paul, I wanted to see if there were any other questions with uh, what we've covered in the demo so far. There are not, but I'll invite students at this time to ask questions if you have them. I'm consistently, every time I listen to your presentation, I'm always reminded about how many amazing features LinkedIn has that I forget about. Um, for students who are just starting out on their profile, what would you say is like the first, you know, step? Um, you know, obviously I think there's value in having um, recommenders as part of your profile, but I imagine you wouldn't ask for those recommendations until you had a profile uh, yeah. identified already. Yep, absolutely. Because um, when you reach out to someone, they're the first thing that they're gonna do is look at your profile and they wanna know quickly, what is this person about who's just reached out to me? So what I recommend is that you actually uh, take an inventory of your academic experience, your professional experience, 
and what it is that you might be looking for. So think about, are you looking to um, connect with other people just to get like information interviews, which is great. Um, are you job hunting? Um, are you interested in learning more about different careers, right? But um, so think about what you're looking for and think about what kind of story do you wanna tell about yourself on LinkedIn? What do you want a potential employer or a potential recruiter or other just professionals to know about you um, as a professional? Even if, even if you're in the beginning of your career, um, you know, all of us on this call have some academic experience and achievements that we can highlight. Um, many of us speak foreign languages. Many of us come from multicultural backgrounds. And so we can navigate different cultural contexts easily, right? Those are all skills that employers are looking for. Um, we volunteer, we write papers that get published. Um, we earn certificates. Those are all things that you want to start to like build out your profile. And the reason why we have, so, cause it can be a little overwhelming, right? But the reason why we have this kind of onboarding here is that you can literally go step-by-step step through each section of your profile and, um, just, you know, build it out one section at a time so that you're not overwhelmed. But that's, that's what I would recommend is that you just go through one by one and you start to just flesh out your story because uh, this is your professional canvas. Thank you. And yeah, there's also new features now. Um, so if you created a profile a long time ago, you know, you might go back and see additional sections that you haven't didn't have the opportunity to complete. I know that was the case for me. There's a couple more questions. Um, one is, how does one go about reinventing themselves? They have a profile, but it's all science-based from when they used to work in research and academia. Mm -hmm. And now they might be looking for other types of jobs. Um, should they create a new profile since they have a new career goal or edit the existing profile that they have? Yeah, great question. So I, I would recommend um, editing your existing profile or at least considering that as an option because here, this is a perfect space to talk about the fact that you're at a uh, inflection point in your career and you're looking to move into XYZ, like new field, right? So you can say, you know, I am a researcher by training. I have this much experience doing research. You know, here's some of my accomplishments. Recently, I, I have made the decision to switch into a new field. Um, and so that can be like just a quick intro, right? To your transition. And then what you can start to do is take courses related to that new um, or attend um, workshops, trainings related to that new field. And then when you're talking to employers and recruiters, you can say, yes, I am a researcher by training, but recently I discovered that I'm really passionate about marketing. I don't know if that's the case for you, but just as an example, like I love marketing, I love telling stories, I love interacting with people. And so I've decided to take my career in a different direction. Um, employers really respect that when you're, when you're honest. And you can talk about how, you know, I have these skills in research and here's how I would bring them to this new role that I'm gonna, um, or this new career that I'm switching into. And all of that you can talk about on your uh, LinkedIn profile. There's another question that came through the chat, which might be a good opportunity to just also give a foreshadow of some of our future events we're going to collaborate on. But this question is, do you have any tips on how to approach someone new on LinkedIn for inter informational interviews? Yeah, definitely. So a couple of options here, or thoughts. Um, one is, you know, you as you build out your network, you can start to you know, let's say I wanted to, um, let's say I wanted to go into public health. Um, so I can search for people and I can see, okay, show me all the people who have public health either in their profile or in their title in some way, shape or form. So let's say Stephanie Lee, okay, 
I'm connected to Stephanie. So she's a first degree connection. That's good. That means she and I have likely interacted or we know each other. Um, these are the, the folks that we have in common, right? We know the same, these same people. Um, but I'm going to look at Stephanie's profile and I don't really know what, what the, um, let's see, let's see what she does. Okay. I don't know what the biostatistics center is. And let's say I wanted to learn more about this center and what she does there. So I, I kind of look at her profile. Okay. So she's full-time there. Okay, great. She went to this school. Okay. Here's a little bit more about what she's done. So I'm getting a sense of who she is. Okay. She's, she's worked abroad. She has international experience. Okay. So this is our, our connection here. Okay. See your education. Um, now, I want to send Stephanie a message, right? And so I may say something like, hi, Stephanie, um, you know, I hope you're well. Um, you know, I'm really interested in this part of the misspelling and learning more about public health and about your role at the GW bio stats in uh, center particular um would you be open to um a 30 minutes um intro interview over zoom right so it could be something like that so you know one you're polite um you're to the point so you're explaining why are you reaching out to this person we're all busy right um, you know, what are you, what are you looking for? But you're also not being pushy. Um, so typically that's how I recommend uh, students or, or professionals reach out to each other is, you know, be polite, tell the, tell the person what you're looking for and why you're reaching out and then uh, propose a call to action, right? So would you be open to a, a quick call in this case? I'm gonna discard that here. And, and then- Oh, I was just gonna say- Oh, go uh, ahead really quick so i happen to know stephanie but you could take the same approach with people that are um like a third third or second degree connection so i don't know this person but i really want to learn about community development so then i could reach out to her too and i can say as um somebody who's has hi hired in the past um i have also received LinkedIn requests for informational interviews about my field that I'm in. Um, and I'm always happy to have those types of calls. And I have had in the past a LinkedIn connection, which was originally started as an informational interview. And then a job position came around. I remembered the person, I forwarded on the job link and they ended up getting the job. So that's also, you know, something that could come out of an informational interview, but not necessarily like the expectation, right? You don't want to start an informational interview with, can you hire me? Yep. Um, but we will actually, Ellison and I are organizing another um, LinkedIn workshop where we expect you between now and then to work on your LinkedIn profile, put some time into it, and then we'll have another workshop where we can actually provide feedback as well as provide that next step of what now, how do you um, reach out to folks for informational interviews? How do you, you know, what, what are the steps to for that? Um, so that we can go into that with a little bit more detail. So Paula, I just wanna be mindful of everyone's time. I see that we're, we're at the hour. Um, is it okay to collect feedback from participants? Yes, of course. Okay, great. So I, I have my um, screen shared here. There's a QR code. If you either go to that link or uh, scan the code, would love it if you could leave just some very quick feedback about um, you know, what you got out of the session. And um, we're always looking to make improvements to this. So any constructive feedback you have is also very welcome. So we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Ellison. And in the chat box, I did invite students on this call to feel free, to, if you have a LinkedIn profile, to add it there if you want to connect with others. Um, and at this point, if anybody has any last minute questions, 
now would be the time. Um, oh yeah, also Ashley just posted um, a link to an upcoming event series that we have, um, which I highly encourage all of you to check out. It's the Global Learning Showcase. And so um, that's gonna be coming up next week on October 26th, 27th, and 28th, and 29th. And I'll just pull up this image right here. We do have a registration happening right now through link, or not through LinkedIn, <laughs> um, through Eventbrite. Um, and so you can register for the whole entire showcase and you'll receive an email um, on the morning of about um, all of the individual links. So definitely encourage you all to check that out. Um, and if there's no additional questions, I just wanna thank Ellison so much for being part of this presentation today and sharing his expertise. Uh, feel free to, oh, I see something in the chat box. Thank you. All right, yes, share your thanks with Ellison in the chat box. and. Uh, Appreciate you all for spending your afternoon with us and we will see you next time. All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.